Good Wednesday afternoon. I'm meteorologist Caitlin McGrath. We are tracking the tropics and major hurricane Fiona, now a major category three storm with sustained winds at 115 miles per hour, gusting up to 140 miles per hour at times and moving off to the north northwest, still relatively slowly, only at nine miles per hour. But what I want you to note here is this is a three hour satellite loop of Fiona. And notice earlier this morning, there was a much more well defined eye, but over the last several hours, it's become a bit clouded over, not nearly as significant, and that could indicate that the storm is undergoing eye wall replacement. This is a very typical process for major hurricanes, and while it can temporarily weaken the storm, it primes them up to re-intensify once that eye wall replacement is complete. So what happens during eye wall replacement? Well, when storms get strong enough, they just start to develop a second eye wall around the original eye wall. Eventually, it kind of just blends together and we get a new potentially stronger eye wall. So that's something we'll be watching really carefully as we head throughout the afternoon and evening because the National Hurricane Center is forecasting Hurricane Fiona to strengthen as it continues to move off slowly to the north and west. Right now, the biggest impact is over Turks and Caicos, still parts of the Dominican Republic and the Bahama Islands. Right now, hurricane warnings in effect for Turks and Caicos. That's where you see shaded there in red and just off to the west in parts of the Bahamas, tropical storm warnings in effect. So let's talk about where Fiona is headed next because over the next several days, we'll continue to see the storm strengthen, eventually likely becoming a category four hurricane by Thursday morning as it passes off to the west of Bermuda. Now there is good news. The storm continues to jog a little bit farther to the west, a little bit farther away from Bermuda. Now Bermuda is still not in a great placement for this storm track. If the storm was to the east of Bermuda, they would get the weaker side of the storm. But right now they are positioned to get the strongest side of Fiona. But thankfully, with that track a little bit farther to the west, that pulls the cone of uncertainty, the cone of concern, a little bit farther away from Bermuda. So we'll be keeping a really close eye on the island and potential impacts as we head towards the end of the week. Because again, this would be overnight Thursday, which we really hate to see right whenever folks are sleeping. It's always terrible when these storms roll through during that time versus during the daylight, but that's the time frame that we're looking at for potential impact from Fiona. If you have interest in the island, make sure you're checking in with loved ones or any property you might have ahead of the potential impact from Fiona by overnight Thursday into Friday morning. The storm will continue to push off to the north and east, maintaining hurricane strength as it approaches the Canadian Maritimes over the weekend. And by 9 a.m. on Saturday, starting to push on shore once again. But once it starts to interact with that land and cooler water in the bay, the storm will weaken into an area of low pressure by the time we get to Sunday. Now, Fiona, not the only storm we're watching this morning. We got Tropical Depression 8. This will likely become our next named storm, which is Gaston. But that storm will just circle out to sea off to the north and east. No threat to land. This is the area that I'm more concerned with. Still hundreds of miles to the east of the Windward Islands. But this has a 70% chance of development in the next five days, and it is of greater concern because of where it's heading, heading just to the south of parts of Puerto Rico. The Leeward and Windward Islands also expected to see impact from this moving to the south of the Dominican Republic. And keep in mind, this is just a general area of where it could head. We could see a track farther off to the north. We could see it stay farther to the south. Farther north looks like the more likely scenario because it would interact with land and uh, lose strength if it does pass farther to the south, but then eventually a lot of our long range guidance keeps it to the south of Cuba, moving into the Gulf of Mexico, and there's a lot of favorability for these storms to become quite strong uh, this time of the year. We're still very much in the peak of hurricane season, so we'll be keeping a very close eye on what will likely become Hermine because Gaston, that will be the storm out to sea, and then we'll watch for our next named storm that uh, has that 70% chance of development over the next five days. So lots to watch in terms of tropics, and we'll be keeping you posted as we head throughout the next several days. Thank you. Um